Welcome to the first page, our video series featuring Thomas C. Foster, author of How to Read Literature Like a Professor. With Professor Foster as our guide, discover that the first page, first paragraph, even sometimes the first sentence of a novel, is the key for what is to come. The opening provides up to 18 important clues to the rest of the novel. Things like style, tone, mood, narrative identity and attitude, theme, and point of view are all here. So watch carefully as Foster delves into the first page of such HarperCollins classroom favorites as To Kill a Mockingbird, Their Eyes Were Watching God, and The Bean Trees. Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Hello again and welcome. I tell my students that while there are a lot of things we might learn from the first page of a novel, there are only two that are unavoidable. The first is whether or not the fiction is in the first person. Either there is an I in the narrative line or there isn't, so we will notice. And the other is style. By the time you read three sentences, you know what this novel by Thomas Hardy is going to sound like. True, you might need a few more, maybe five or six for Ernest Hemingway, but that's because with him, you don't get much per sentence. In any case, by the end of the page, you will know what Hardy or Hemingway is going to sound like. So let's say you've never read a particular novelist before. Happens all the time with first novels, naturally. And you're confronted with this. Ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. For some, they come in with the tide. For others, they sail forever on the horizon, never out of sight, never landing until the watcher turns his eyes away in resignation, his dreams mocked to death by time. That is the life of men. Now, women forget all those things they don't want to remember and remember everything they don't want to forget. The dream is the truth. Then they act and do things accordingly. That's the beginning of Zora Neale Hurston's classic, Their Eyes Were Watching God. We are not surprised, based on this beginning, when the novel turns out to be about the experience of a woman who cannot be defined or contained by the men in her life. That would almost be enough for the opening to accomplish. Its major feat, however, is to signal something very important. This author knows how to write. So, you ask, don't all authors? No, they don't. Some are better storytellers than stylists, and for Hurston's purposes, it is important to establish yourself at the outset as a stylist. Much of the novel that follows will be told in dialect. She uses a very literary technique called free indirect discourse, in which the narrative takes its cues and much of its language from the thoughts and words of its characters. And her characters are barely literate, and sometimes less, residents of an all-black community in Florida. She knows that writing in their language will open her up to criticism the way it did Mark Twain and other regionalists in the 19th century. But Twain had something she lacks when he let Huckleberry Finn speak for himself, a track record. He had written numerous books in more or less standard English before that, and even so he was derided for the prose in his masterpiece. Hurston then, is attempting to forestall criticism by beginning the novel in a fairly high literary style that makes observations worthy of Jane Austen. See, she says, I know what I'm doing. Now that's not the only reason for establishing a primary style that is educated and assured. It will also be a welcome point of return at those times of the novel when she is not echoing her characters, and it creates a distance between one way of speaking in the primary narrative line and a second derived from her character's language. Such a gap calls attention to her achievement, not so much in writing the language we expect in novels as in capturing that other way of speaking, and that achievement is very great indeed. For more information about the first page, please visit www.harperacademic.com.